Uh, we want to say good morning, as I've already done for our in-person congregation. We want to say good morning to our Facebook Live congregation. Uh, those of you that watch the worship service later in the week, I'm saying hello to you also. Uh, as God gathers us together uh, for his gifts, uh, we, had, we have had a series of uh, two sets of three uh, in, in our uh, gospel readings over the last uh, several weeks. Uh, we had three parables. Now we have the third of uh, some miracles. And the miracle, like last week, the miracle is not what you presume it to be in this one. Yes, there is a miracle of a healing, but that is not the miracle. The miracle that we hear in this story today in the gospel is the miracle we all have received. The miracle of faith. As, as God comes to us with his word, especially as we gather together in person, today we receive not only his word, but we, we receive the crumbs that fall from the master's table. And you will hear that in the lesson, because as we, uh, we conclude the worship for our Facebook congregation, we will move into the uh, service of the sacrament. And, and how, how plentiful is his crumb that falls from the table? It's huge. And so that, that is the same that carries in that gospel uh, lesson of, of how huge that crumb that fell from the master's table, not only to heal her daughter, but also the faith that uh, she was given. So as we gather together as God's people in this place, we, we pray for the Holy Spirit to mold and shape our hearts and minds for our time of worship. And so we take some time in prayerful meditation. Uh, you can let the Spirit guide your prayer. Uh, you may use one of the hymn verses uh, as you guide your prayer. Please notice that uh, the benediction will be sung today uh, as the fourth verse of the last hymn is a great uh, benediction uh, verse. Uh, but you can use one of the hymns or you may use one of the scripture passages to guide your prayer today. And we do so as the candles are being lit and the prelude is being played.
There are many times in the silence where we are wondering where God is. But we know that God is in the morning. God is at the noontime. God is in the evening as he gathers us together. As we are reminded that he is there with us always because of the faith in which he has given to us. A faith which comes from the heart and gets proclaimed from the lips. That was ours when the waters of baptism were poured over us. So we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We continue with the singing of the first hymn, and I invite the congregation to please stand. summarizes it well. Confession has two parts. First, that we confess our sins, and second, that we receive absolution, that is, forgiveness from the pastor as from God himself, not doubting, but firmly believing that by it our sins are forgiven before God in heaven. Humble yourselves then before God and confess your sins to him and implore his forgiveness. Almighty oh, God, merciful Father, I, a troubled and penitent sinner, confess to you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have offended you, and justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. By nature I am a sinful creature. By God, word and deed, I have continually transgressed your law. For the sake of the sufferings and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, be gracious and merciful to me, a penitent and contrite being. Forgive me all of my sins, and grant me the power of your Holy Spirit, that I may amend my sinful life. God, be gracious to you and strengthen your faith. Amen. As you believe, so let it be. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty and everlasting Father, you give your children many blessings, even though we are undeserving. In every trial and temptation, grant us steadfast confidence in your loving kindness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The congregation may be seated.
Old Testament reading for the 11th Sunday after Pentecost is from Isaiah chapter 56. Thus says the Lord, keep justice and do righteousness, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord, and to be his servants, everyone who keeps the Sabbath and does not profane it and holds fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, declares, I will gather yet others to him beside those already gathered. The epistle is from Romans chapter 11. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means, for I am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. Now I am speaking to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I magnified my ministry in order somehow to make my fellow Jews jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection means the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance mean but life from the dead? As regards the gospel, they are enemies of God for your sake. But as regards election, they are beloved for the sake of their forefathers. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you. Just as you were at one time disobedient to God but now have received mercy because of their disobedience. So they too have now been disobedient in order that by mercy shown to you, they also may receive mercy. For God has consigned all to disobedience that he may have mercy on all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 15th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Lord. Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she is crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite the congregation to please be seated. Grace, peace, and mercy from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Betty. Couldn't have been read it any better. 
could not have been read any better, especially knowing what happens in this gospel text. Because here we have Jesus and the disciples coming into a strange place. We've seen him on the Sea of Galilee or near the Sea of Galilee the last couple of weeks. Now he's in the region of Tyre and Sidon, which is way to the northwest side. So, so they've been booking it because they didn't go there by uh, automobile or by horse-drawn carriage. Uh, they hoofed it. And so here they are in this strange place. It's a foreign territory. And here this woman comes. She comes and addresses him appropriately. Somehow the word has gone ahead. Somehow this woman who should not have known knew something and addresses him very appropriately. In fact, so worshipful is her countenance that she humbly offers a prayer. Because here she sees in this one, this Jesus, someone that she can come to for help. And in fact, she is crying out for mercy. And if you notice the text, she was crying. That's why I said how very appropriate to read. And she's crying out for mercy. And then there's the good old disciples. There's the good old disciples who are trying to get rid of her. In fact, they say the same thing that we heard them say two weeks ago in the feeding of the 5,000 when it was late at night and they saw the prospect of what they were going to have to do in ministry. They say, send her away. And basically, if you look at that text, yeah, I'm, I'm putting maybe a Pastor Dave spin on it. Not only are they saying, send her away, they're also saying, leave us alone. Haven't we ever felt that way at times in ministry? But we know Jesus is there. We know Jesus is going to do the right thing. And so Jesus reacts in silence. What? Wait, hold on. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus didn't respond immediately to her request. No, Jesus reacts. In silence. Could it be that Jesus is at a loss for words? I don't think so. Maybe, maybe he's not inclined to respond to her because she's a woman. And, and especially in Jewish tradition, they didn't do that out in public. No, that's not Jesus usually his usual MO either. Maybe there was no need for him to have any concern because she was a pagan Canaanite. Hmm. The only thing we do know in the silence of Jesus in that in that moment is that there was a lack of of an apparent answer. You can ask why all you want, but we don't know. As Jack and I did on Tuesday, we, we made some assumptions that are there because I truly believe that Jesus is doing more than ministering to that woman in that moment. He's also teaching the disciples. So there's a lack of an apparent answer. Have you ever been in that spot where you have received silence from God? 
where you have pleaded to God, where you have cried out to him for mercy, and all you get is silence. You have hopes and expectations regarding your struggles and regarding your requests because you keep reiterating, repeating the same prayer over and over and over again every morning, every noontime, every night. So you have this hope and expectation because you know who God is, you know who Jesus is, just like that woman did. She knew something about Jesus who was standing before her, just like we do, and there's silence. We experience distress in those moments, especially when we don't get the answer right away. Sometimes we experience disappointment in those moments because we don't get the answer that we thought we knew we needed. Sometimes we get despair in those moments because they seem to be lingering too long. Because the coronavirus was going to be gone by September. <clears throat> And all we get is silence. And in, in the silence, there seems to be no activity of God that we can see. And with God's seeming, seemingly inactivity, there's an emptiness. Too often we look at ourselves and we, see, we, we assume a special status, we assume a special privilege that God should answer our prayers at our beck and call. And it, it's in those moments where, where, you know, I've been that good Christian, I've been doing those things in the right manner that I feel like I deserve a certain amount of God's favor because he owes me. And sometimes we push it to the point in, in the way that the disciples were acting in, in this story is that we demand our rights. God, you're here for us. Why are you taking care of somebody else? And God remains hidden. And we feel ignored. We feel forgotten. And in some ways we feel we might as well just save our breath. And we fall silent. And in that silent moment is where God begins to work. Because it's in that silent moment where I recognize my lack of privilege. I am a poor, miserable, what privilege do I have commanding God what to do for me? I identify within myself. As Luther said, I come to the altar as a beggar with empty hands. I have nothing to offer. Or as we hear in this story, I'm just a mere dog sitting underneath the table. And when I'm brought to my knees, when I'm brought to face my humility, 
It's in that moment, just like a woman, it's in that moment where we realize just who we are talking to. And when we are brought in that moment of humility, as we saw the example this morning, when we are brought to that point of humility, when we know we deserve none of this, it's in that moment where we cry where we cry for the Lord's mercy. And we say, Lord, help me. And that's when the Lord breaks his silence. That's when the Lord comes with his presence and fills the emptiness that we are feeling. And it may not resolve the issue that is before us, but what he does is in his presence fills the moment fills our hearts, fills our minds, fills our life with his presence and saying, peace be with you. Don't be afraid. Or as I said last Sunday or the Sunday before, quit fearing. Because he fills that emptiness and he mercies us. He mercies us in such a way that we receive an insight. We get this insight of who Jesus is and what his mission is for, who his mission is for. That he truly is our Lord and Savior and that his mission is not just for you and for me, but it's for the whole world. And you and I then are invited to receive, and we are included to receive God's promises, all of them. And it's in that moment where we can trust whatever God gives us. We can trust in a meager morsel. Because if that's all God gives us, he knows that that's all that we need. And so we can trust in that meager mo mo the meager morsel of his provision. Because what might seem a meager morsel to you and me, it's an abundance in the heart of a believer. It's, it, it is an abundance that falls from the table of the master. It's an abundance that falls far enough for you and for me to withhold in our hands and in our hearts. And in that abundance, not only do we receive that which we have asked him for, but even more importantly, our faith becomes secure. Our faith stands its ground. And just like this woman, as, as uh, Jesus uh, said the opposite of with the Pharisees in a few verses before this, from her heart and on her lips, as we heard last week in mm -hmm. Romans, from her heart and from her lips, she proclaims, who Jesus is and what Jesus does and who he does it for. And Jesus says to her, woman, great is your faith. Brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus says that to us today. Jesus says that to us as we continue to go through this uh, uncertain time with the pandemic and with the social unrest. He says, let me give you what I need to give you. Let Just hold on to that meager morsel. Let it be the abundance that I want to flow out to you for the certainty of your faith through this time. Because you were made for a time like this so that you can declare to the world from your heart and from your lips that Jesus Christ is Lord Because just as he did here, Jesus is entering new territory with you and with me and with the church as we move through this pandemic. 
we are entering new territory. He's going to be breaking boundaries again and again, just as he broke the bounds of Satan on the cross. Just as he broke through the boundaries when the waters of baptism were poured upon your head. He's breaking boundaries still in this world today. And he's going to unsettle you and me. He's going to unsettle All Saints Lutheran Church that it can't be business as usual anymore. Because he knows what he's doing. He's creating a space at his table for others to join us. Not only now as we gather together in worship, but even more importantly, in eternity. I know we have a number of our members that are going through certain trials at this time. We have been praying for them. Some of them are unnamed as they have been brought to me. And I especially preach for them this day. In that moment where you feel and believe that God is silent, realize God is at work. God is at work doing that to prepare for you the banqueting table. The banqueting table, not only as we receive Jesus' body and blood today, but, on, but ultimately to prepare you for the banqueting table that we will receive with the abundance of God's meal for now and through eternity. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Part of that meager morsel that we speak in our faith, uh, we do so in the words of the Apostles' Creed, which may be found printed on the bulletin on page 4. I invite the congregation to please stand. And we join together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends in Christ, I urge you all to lift up your hearts to God and pray with me as Christ our Lord has taught us and freely promised to hear us. God our Father in heaven, look with mercy upon us, your needy children on earth. And grant us grace that your holy name be hallowed by us and all the world through the pure and true teaching of your word and the fervent love shown forth in our lives. Graciously turn from us all false, false doctrine and evil living, whereby your precious name is blasphemed and profaned. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May your kingdom come to us and expand. Bring all transgressors and those who are blinded and bound in the devil's kingdom to know Jesus Christ, your son, by faith, that the number of Christians may be increased. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen us by your Holy Spirit, according to your will, both in life and in death, in the midst of both good and evil things, that our own wills may be crucified daily and sacrifice to your good and gracious will. Into your merciful hands we commend those for whom we pray. For Richard Robinson, still battling his infection. For Rita, for strength, comfort, and peace. For Dennis Litzenberg, with ongoing health issues. For Chris, for Cliff Fessler, who is hospitalized. For Charlotte, his wife, for strength. For Anita, as she prepares for upcoming surgeries. For Sally, and her time of uh, healing and guidance. 
and for all others that we name silently in our minds and in our hearts. And all others who are in need, praying for them at all times. Thy will be done, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Grant us our daily bread. Preserve us from greed and selfish cares. And help us trust in you to provide for all our needs. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray for the Litzenbergs on the occasion of the sale of their house. We pray that all goes well in that closing and their uh, move to uh, uh, be fully down in Florida. We also uh, lift up our prayers for the Union County school system uh, as they start school tomorrow. We pray your safekeeping and hand over them, especially during uh, this troubling time with the coronavirus. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Forgive us our sins as we also forgive those who sin against us, so that our hearts may be at peace and may rejoice in a good conscience before you, and that no sin may ever frighten or alarm us. Lord, in your mercy. Lead us not into temptation, O Lord, but help us by your Spirit to subdue our flesh, to turn from the world and its ways, and to overcome the devil with all his wiles. Lord, in your mercy. And lastly, O Heavenly Father, deliver us from all evil of both body and soul, now and forever. Lord, in your mercy. We trust, O Lord, in your great mercy to hear and answer us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The congregation may be seated for the singing of the hymn. Oh. 